Hello friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, let's discuss many question and answer from strength of materials. This will be very useful for you to clear any exams or to attend interviews. These questions are all very very important. So let's discuss all these questions with explanations without delay. Let's begin now. Question number one. In a loaded beam, the point of contraflexure occurs at a section where bending moment is minimum, bending moment is zero or changes sign shear force is maximum shear force is minimum bending moment is maximum the answer is bending moment is zero or changes sign let's consider an overhanging beam let's draw the bending moment diagram so this will be like this and then like this so here the bending moment will be positive and here this will be negative so what is happening here the bending moment changes sign from positive to negative at this point so this is called point of contraflexure point of contraflexure occurs at a section where the bending moment is zero or bending moment changes its sign the pre-hinged arch is said to be statically determinate statically indeterminate bent beam or none of this this is very important question in many of the interviews you may get this question a three hinged arch is said to be statically determinate structure. Let me explain you how it is statically determinate. Usually three hinged arch looks like this. It will be having two hinged support at both ends and in the middle at the top of the crown it will be having an internal hinge. Here there will be an internal hinge in three hinged arch. So this is the three hinged arch two hinged support and one internal hinge. As we all know that we will be having one vertical reaction and one horizontal reaction for hinged support. Similarly, here also we will be getting one vertical reaction and one horizontal reaction. So total reactions are four. Reactions are four. Equilibrium equations. We know equilibrium equations are three. We get one additional equation due to the released reaction at internal hinge at the crown so we have one equation so now our total equations will become four so now we need to find out the static determinacy which is equal to number of reactions minus number of equilibrium equations equilibrium equations we know three plus one one additional reactions we get due to the released reaction at internal hinges so here we have 4 minus 4 then it will become 0 so the so the three hinged arch is said to be statically determinate because the number of equations and the number of reactions are same the shape of a bending moment over the length of a beam having no external load is always linear parabolic cubical or circular the answer is linear let's consider a simply supported beam of length l so there is no load is acting on the beam so the bending moment diagram will look like this this is always linear because there is no load so that is why it is linear if some other load uh, whether it is a point load or uniformly distributed load is acting on the beam then the bending moment diagram will be different since there is no load is acting on the beam, the bending moment diagram is always linear. A rectangular bar of width B and height H is being used as a cantilever. The loading is in a plane parallel to side B. The section modulus is BH cube by 12, BH square by 6, B square H by 6, none of these. The answer is B square H by 6. Consider the rectangle beam. This will be your B width of the beam and this is your depth of the beam so here what they had given width is b only and they had given the height so here d is equal to d they have given as h the condition is loading is in a plane parallel to side b so in this case your b is equal to h and your d is equal to b so this will interchange the dimensions of the beam so this we need to consider here we need to find out the section modulus z is equal to i by y y is the distance y max this is the formula to find out the section modulus so i is the moment of inertia i is equal to b d cube by 12 so here what is your b your b is h and d is b so h b cube by 12 
and we need to find out y max y max is equal to y is equal to d by 2 so here you know d is equal to b so this we can write it as b by 2 let's apply these values in the formula z is equal to h b cube by 12 divided by b by 2 is the value for y which is equal to h b cube by 12 multiplied by 2 by b so if we cancel this we get 6 so which is equal to h b square divided by 6 or else we can write it as b square h divided by 6 so that is the answer we get b square h by 6 the deflection due to coupled mat the free end of a cantilever length l is ml by ea 2 ml by ea ml square by 2 ea the answer is ml square by 2 ea let's consider the cantilever beam this is a and this is b so it is having the coupled mat at the free end so the deflection is equal to m l square by 2 ei similarly slope theta is equal to m l by ei you have to remember this carefully this is not like udl load or point load at the free end the deflection due to coupled mat at the free end of a cantilever length l is m l square by 2 ei and slope is m l by ei if two forces acting at a joint are not along a straight line then for the equilibrium of the joint first one is one of the forces must be zero each force must be zero forces must be equal and of the same sign forces must be equal in magnitude but opposite sign the right answer is each force must be zero here we have two condition one is not along a straight line another one is equilibrium so to satisfy these conditions each force must be zero there will not be any magnitude at the joint so there will not be any magnitude of the force each force must be zero if the shear force along a section of beam is zero the bending moment at the section is zero maximum minimum average of maximum minimum none of this the answer is maximum let's consider a simply supported beam length l let's draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram so the shear force diagram looks like this and the bending moment diagram looks like this so here it is positive shear force will be positive and here it is negative this is the positive bending moment so here you can see this is the point where shear force is zero so at that point the bending moment is maximum you have to understand this concept clearly the point at which the shear force is zero the bending moment will be maximum similarly the point at which the bending moment is zero the shear force will be maximum next one is a simply supported beam of span l carries a concentrated load w at its mid span the maximum bending moment m is w l by 2 w l by 4 w l by 8 w l by 12 and w l by 16 the answer is w l by 4 let's consider the simply supported beam of length l so it is having the concentrated load it is not udl it is concentrated load let's consider this one as w and this is the length l we need to draw the bending moment diagram so the bending moment diagram for the simply supported beam with the concentrated load looks like this so this will become the maximum bending moment that is w l divided by 4 the shape of the bending moment diagram over the length of a beam carrying a uniformly distributed load is always linear, parabolic, cubical or circular. The answer is parabolic. So let's take the beam having uniformly distributed load. Let's draw the bending moment diagram for this. The bending moment diagram looks like this. Since it has the UDL, the bending moment diagram will be parabolic. For a simply supported beam with a central load, the bending moment is least at the central, least at the support, maximum at the support, maximum at the center. So the answer is maximum at the center. Let's consider the simply supported beam having central load. Central load is concentrated load. So the load is acting at the center. W, this will be in kilonewton. So then the bending moment will be maximum at the center. 
so this is how the bending moment diagram look like this if the simply supported beam is having a central load so this is the maximum bending moment bending moment will be maximum at center if the width of a simply supported beam carrying an isolated load at its center is doubled the deflection of the beam at the center is changed by half 1 by 8 to 8 4 the answer is 1 by 2 let's write the formula for deflection of a simply supported beam that is w l cube by 48 ea what is the condition here the width of a simply supported beam carrying an isolated load at its center is doubled so the width of the beam will become 2b then we need to find out the i value instead of bd cube by 12 we have to write this as 2b d cube by 12 so if we substitute the same thing in the deflection formula let's substitute this value in the deflection formula y is equal to w l cube divided by 48 e instead of i we can uh, substitute it as 2 b d cube by 12 this we can write it as half we can take it out and then w l cube by 48 e this bd cube by 12 we can write it as i so when the width is doubled so when the width of the beam is doubled the deflection is reduced by half so the answer is 1 by 2 the deflection of any rectangle beam is simply supported is directly proportional to its weight inversely proportional to its width inversely proportional to the cube of its depth directly proportional to the cube of its length none of this the answer is inversely proportional to the cube of its depth let's consider the deflection formula for simply supported beam that is w l cube by 48 e i so deflection is inversely proportional to moment of inertia moment of inertia formula is i is equal to b d cube by 12 so the deflection of any rectangular beam that is simply supported inversely proportional to the cube of its depth cube of its depth is this one b d cube by 12 so it is inversely proportional so friends i hope you all like this video if you really like the content super thanks buttons has been enabled in our channel please click on that button by logging into your email id and then pay same amount to support the channel also your comments are always welcome do share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos thank you for watching